Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got a very, 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 very big project to share. This is my large wall decoration. So this is all themed with the Day of the Dead from that 12 by 12 Fiesta Fever paper pack by Trimcraft, first edition. And I'm falling in love with this. I absolutely adore it. It is all made of rosettes. Um, it's just a much bigger version and idea from my Easter rosette um, kind of wreath that I done. So it's kind of evolved from that and it's just become this very large piece which hangs with this ribbon here. And I've got that ribbon in the bow there if I just bring it up. And then I've just literally gone crazy with decorations. I've used my Winker Stella on the leaves there to bring that sparkle. You can really see it really does pick it up. I've made all these flowers. I've got my Happy Halloween um, sign here, which I've made out of old um, game, like Scrabble kind of pieces. Tons and tons of rosettes. There are loads and loads, you can see them all here. And a massive one on the bottom with this really fun pom-pom trim. And I've put my little faceted gemstones in the eyes of the fussy cut sugar skulls. Um, I've got two huge flowers here. And this massive one is my favourite. I just love that at the bottom with all that lovely colour. Um, so yeah, I've gone a different route with my Halloween this year and I've gone really colourful um, with it as opposed to purples, oranges, blacks. Um, I really, really like how this has turned out. So it's, um, it's one of those tutorials that you can kind of really just feel inspired by and you know make any size you want you may just want to do a small one that's just this size here of this large fan um, or rosette you may just want to keep that size but um, yeah I'm going to show you how to make this one here it's really strong it's going to last now I've, I've reinforced it and I will show you all of those steps as well so let's get into the tutorial okay so as you can see I have done loads of the rosettes already so at the moment I've got three size rosettes so I'm doing one that is three inches by 12 okay then I have got sorry not one I'll go through that in a minute, but I've done a 3 by 12, I've done a 2 by 12, and I've done a 1 by 12. Okay, so these are the three sizes. Now, when you're using, so this one here is the 3 by 12. So I've cut from this, it takes two pieces, so it's used, to make two, we'll use up one piece of 12 by 12, because you're cutting it um, at every three inches. So 3, 6, 9, 12, you'll get four strips of 3 by 12, two strips for each rosette, so those are the two there. Now this, I love this ombre effect, which is the ombre array um, 12 by 12 paper pack by Hobbycraft. Um, and I just love the effect that it gives the rosettes that you get there. So yeah, so for the three by 12, you will get two rosettes out of one piece of 12 by 12. So there is the one of the green ones that I've done and that's the other two strips there, which I'm gonna show. For the these ones here, which are the two by 12, you will get three rosettes. So here are my two already and this is gonna be my third one. Again, they each use two strips, okay? Um, that's the purple I've already used and that's the ombre array again so you can see the darker purple and then it goes into the light so I've got my three there and then for the one by um, uh, 12 ones you will get grab them all here you will get six because again two strips for each and those are my five and then this will be my sixth one and here I already have the six again using that ombre array um, it's really nice with the orange and the purple there and they, all those colours work really well with that um, Day of the Dead theme. So what you need to do is along the 12 inch side on whatever size it is, whether it's the 3, the 2 or the 1, you just want to score at every half an inch. Okay, so half an inch, 1 inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, all the way along until you get to the end. I've already concertinaed that one, so then all I'm going to do is very quickly just go along like so, and then what you'll do is you'll squeeze it really tight once you get to the end. So rather than folding it like that and then flipping it over and go back, you can very quickly just do it like this. The longer ones are a little bit more fiddly, the smaller ones actually you can whiz through, but you can see once you kind of get a flow like that, 
Then when you've done it, get them all lined up. Okay, so just push them so you get them into that line and then just squeeze the end. And again, make sure it's all lined up and squeeze the end and then the rest will all come in together. And you'll have two, okay? So you always need two for every rosette. So that's that one, and then again, along the two by 12, I've already scored it at every half an inch, and you can see now how quick that one is to just kind of concertina fold. Mountain valley, mountain valley, it's pretty straight already, so I can just squeeze that like so, and there's those two, and then again, the one inch is even you know quicker, you can literally just, once you've made rosettes, I've been making rosettes for years, so it's 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 kind of second nature. You don't think about it, but um, check out my other tutorials. I'm a bit slower, I guess, with that and explain it more, but they are pretty self-explanatory. And there's that one. That's actually a different size, so I'll just flip it over that way and just redo that one actually, because this is double-sided um, uh, paper for these ones. And the, the nice thing is with these ones actually is I can have them anyway. So look, that's that print, and then that's that print there. So they're slightly different. Again, with this one here, I've got the skulls on that side in purple, or I've got that one. So if you're using double-sided, it works great for rosettes because you can flip them. Um, those ones are just plain white. Okay, so that is now, yeah, all of my pieces done there. So I'll get rid of the scoreboard. You're not gonna need that much. It's just literally to get all of your rosettes done. Oh. I forgot to say, once before I put them together, for the main big rosette that it kind of all sits on, this uses up, so it's one piece of 12 by 12. So if you imagine, okay, this was stretched out. So actually, no, two pieces of 12 by 12, sorry. I'm thinking then that's not right. Yeah, two pieces of 12 by 12. So that's one half that I've already done because this is a huge rosette, okay? This is a 12 inch diameter rosette. So this would have been my piece of 12 by 12, this one's already been folded up. Along your 12 inch side, just cut it at six inches. So then you get two pieces of six by 12. Again, along the 12 inch side, just score at every half inch. And then again, this one, you have to be a little bit, it takes a bit more time because it's too long, but just concertina fold, just like all the others. So basically I'm just making loads of different sized rosettes. Now you can, once you know kind of, you know, what you're doing, you know, you can adapt this to any size you want. If you want to, you could use four pieces of 12 by 12, score the 12 inch piece, don't cut it, just score the whole 12 inch piece at every half inch, and you could have a 24 inch diameter rosette, but it would take four pieces of 12 by 12, because you would need a piece for every kind of quarter. Um, one piece, um, or two pieces, sorry, would just not stretch around that much. So for the 12 by 12, you do need the four pieces like I've got here. So one, two, and then that one's already done with the three and the four. And then just so you can see, when you concertina that all together and bring it around, that forms one half of your um, rosette. It's also really nice for a fan as well. This is how you would make a fan. So, um, like I said, if you wanted to do a 24 inch, you imagine that would be one piece of 12 by 12 would just make that corner. So another 12 by 12 would be there, there and there, and the whole thing would then be 24 inches. I didn't really want to go that big. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. We now need to get them stuck together. So first of all, I always say whenever you're making rosettes, do it like a kind of a um, conveyor belt style. So get all your stages done. So I've already gone through and done all my scoring and folded everything. Next, I'm gonna stick them together. Now you'll find that you've got mountain and mountain, mountain and mountain at the start and the ends of all your pieces. What you wanna do, it's just easier to cut it, to just keep it at the 12 inches and then just cut off that one strip so that now we are left with this valley fold. So we've got this piece sticking up. And the reason I take that bulk off is because it will kind of make a difference. You will note, you will see it on your rosette. Um, maybe not so much with pattern paper, but certainly if you're using the plane. Then with this mountain fold on this piece, you're just gonna sit it really neatly over the top. And it just gives you no bulk and it gives that continued look. So you don't see the join and there's no bulk. So you wouldn't see now where that's joined together, okay? 
Then with this end, we need to remove again that last piece. So we've just got um, now a value folder, not a mountain. And then again, just pop some glue on that one half. And then this piece, bring it around so you've got a circle and just stick that over and squeeze it together. Okay, so you're going to have that. So you want to go and do that on all of your other pieces. This is my 1x12, again, just on one of the ends, just snip that one piece off. Pop that one on. Oh, I thought I'd folded that. I think I got confused with the prints because they're so similar with these ones. Um, I don't want to have two different prints on that one, so let me just refold that one. There we go. So there's my, there's my valley fold, and here is my mountain. So I'm just sticking that over the top. Like so, and then again, go to this end here, snip that bit off, pop your glue and bring that around, like so. Okay, and I'm just going to do that with the 2 by 12 Okay, so that's those ones done, and then with this one you want to do exactly the same. So, whatever one you're starting with, again, you do want to take off that last bit. I mean, you can cut them to 12 by 11 and a half, but it's just easier to just do it this way, I think. And then again, do it exactly the same way, it's just this is much, much longer. And just make sure it's bent up, because it will mean you'll get this kind of stuck together better. Like so, I'm kind of flatting it once it's in place, and just refold it. So, okay, so for the big one you'll have your two huge pieces like this, and then again, whatever end you've got, take that one off, like so, add this one. Each time you stick it together, just kind of bring it all together and really stick that down. And then the last one now we've got to do is cut this end, okay, and then bring that whole thing round and again stick that over and just pinch it together like so. And you'll have that huge one, okay. So next we're going to now need our heat gun. So I've got my um, glue gun on there just check it is yeah it's heated up nicely so basically all you want to do is just go along and just make sure you got all your folds with the one by um, 12 try and just fold it like that and then basically just push it inwards like so this is the only I'd say more fiddlier one the rest of them kind of really do just fall into place um, and then just refold those bits like so. Okay, so now you've got it springing like this. And then get your glue gun very carefully. So see, this is piping hot. And I just kind of squeeze a bead of glue into the middle and then push it, squeeze it all together, keeping it in its shape. So kind of, you know, fan it out so it's all nice and even. And just hold that there for a minute. Okay, so now that's staying there, I can let go of it. Now the glue is still warm enough for me to kind of move a bit. So this is, you know, be careful, make sure it really is just warm and not hot. But I just use my finger. You can use a silicone um, thing, but I think I've, I've, last time I mentioned I'd lost it, I think it has gone in the bin. Um, basically, I just get my finger and just push down the glue. Now that is literally just about to set. It's still a little bit warm, it's not hot at all, but it just means, and then I just rub my finger over it and let you can see, it's just, pushed it right down so it's all flush so I haven't got any lumps of glue and it's gone right into that rosette and that won't open again now. Flip it over and you can see you've got a little hole there. I just open it a little bit and pop another little bead of glue, kind of rub it on top as well and then just squeeze that side. It pops back up again but again in a minute once that kind of is gone warm I can just push that down with my finger. Okay so that's how that one's finished on both sides and then I've just gone ahead and done 
the 2 by 12 and the 3 by 12 okay so in total you should now if you're following exactly as I'm doing it you should have four rosettes that are the 3 by 12 okay so they will be six inch diameter it's probably easier to say that actually so you'll have four that are six inches you will have six that are four inches and then you will have 12 that are two inches in diameter okay so that's those ones and those ones okay so lots and lots of rosettes looking really really nice these are what I've already fussy cut I'll go through those in a moment next I'm just going to do that really large one just show you how it looks so we left it like this so I'm going to flip it over and basically just bring in the sides and it will just fan out and look how gorgeous that looks it is just amazing now what I'm going to do with this one because it's such a big hole I just don't want to fill that all with glue so I'm actually going to kind of open the kind of bits of you know folded card so the glue can fold can fold can fall down between the folds and then once that's done so this is all going to be covered up but just kind of get into those don't need to do every one but get into most of them and then I can then just really push that together and you'll see the glue kind of ooze out the top but that's what you want you want to get that really tight um, you know finish so I'm just going to hold that there for a minute so that glue sets and again just as that glue is setting I'm just going around with my finger do not do this when it's hot literally leave it about a minute 60 seconds or so and then put your finger on it I do not want to be held responsible for burns, although I've had my fair few with the glue gun because they are lethal. But just go along and I'm just really pushing in that almost set glue into those gaps like so. Okay, it's still springing open a little bit. So now what I can do, because the hole in the middle now has gone much smaller, is I'm actually now going to put more glue just in the middle. Okay, and again, just let that all set. Okay, so that's that side done. Flip it over because you'll see it still kind of want to pounce up and I can see that glue there still kind of setting in the middle. And then just repeat the same. So I'm just going to put it in there and all on the outsides and that will just seal the back side. We are going to be covering these with little discs as well just to kind of give it extra um, strength and to make it easier to stick on top of each other and onto other surfaces. So again, I'm just going to hold that in place. Okay, so that's that side. So now that doesn't pop open and how, that is amazing. Look at that. It's got such a cool look about it. I absolutely love it. And that pattern is just completely, it just continues all the way around. You wouldn't see any joins of the four pieces that we've put together there. So now I've got all these amazing rosettes. I need to start building it all together. Okay, so as I mentioned, you then need to seal the back. So I've just gone and grabbed my nest of um, uh, just plain circle dies here. These are the Sizzix ones. This will also keep it in its shape, um, but also it will give us a flat surface to be able to stick it to things. The same with these. So I've just gone and just done the, the, one of the other sizes and covered them. It means now I can put glue on that and stick it onto this surface and it will stick much better. So I've done all of them and then just for the smaller ones, so just raid your scraps. Um, it could be a, you know old newspaper, not newspaper, it's too flimsy, magazine will be fine. Um, but just go through and, and get your circles cut out. So I need 12 of these ones here. Okay, that's all of those. And then literally I just got some hot glue and just popped a little bit on the back and choose see which side you want to have it this one just literally hides underneath it but you can't see it at all it just means you've got that whole surface now to be able to stick them I'm going to do half and half I'm going to do half with that print and then I'm going to flip it over and do half with that print so just go ahead and get all of your discs kind of stuck onto the back of your rosettes okay so we've done all of our rosettes everything's prepped we've got our backs on there but now it's time to start dressing up and just really having fun so I've got this really loud lime pom-pom trim and I'm basically going to stick this all around the edge now this is completely optional you might have some nice laces some fabrics you could back them behind here just to make it even bigger again I may well still do something I'm still kind of 
as I'm going along I'm finding things in my craft room but anyway I'm going to go and start sticking this down so the easiest way to stick this trim is just put a very thin I'm just going to do each kind of fold as I go I don't want to put too much glue down and I'm just keeping that um, trim lined up with the edge of my fan and then just keep kind of working along just bit by bit until I've gone all the way around. Okay so that's that one done. How cool does that look? I absolutely love that. It almost looks like a placemat or a, you know you could imagine that as a nice like rug or something. That would look really really cool. That's very much me. I really like that. So yeah, so that's a way of decorating the ends. You could just put ribbon on that, you could have tassel trim, all kinds of stuff, it would look fun. And you can go and do that on as many as your rosettes, rosettes as you want. I'm just gonna probably, I think, just keep it with this larger one here. Okay, so another thing that I have remembered I had is my We Are Memory Keepers flower punch board. And it makes really large flowers, like this size here. And then you can have, um, that's the XXL haven't got the extra L or L here. Then I've got the medium, which is this one. Small, sorry, that's small. And then this is extra small. And then there's XXS as well. Um, it's really, really good. I've had this about a year and a half now. Um, but it's one of those things I kind of forget I had. I made a really nice bouquet of flowers. Um, these look great on your wall. So I'm not gonna do a tutorial on it today, but if anybody would like me to do a tutorial, then just pop a message in the comments and um, if, if I get quite a few of them then by all means I'll do a tutorial because I've got some space on my craft room wall and it's making me now think to do some really nice flower displays so just let me know and um, I will do that but basically I've gone ahead and just done some flowers I'm going to do even more smaller ones with just my normal die cuts um, or my normal dies sorry and, and have smaller die cuts but basically now I'm just going to start kind of positioning it really and where I want it. I want this big flower down like here. Um, again I've got a huge surface here to add glue and that can just stick onto there. Um, and then I'm going to kind of do like a I don't I don't really know yet I'm just gonna start playing around um, I'm gonna speed this part up but you can kind of watch me kind of playing around until I get it into the position that I like. Okay, so a lot of it's off the screen because I've gone quite far up here as well, but you'll see it obviously in the pictures. But I kind of like this, so I've got this kind of shape. And then I'm going to have my kind of words that I'm going to use. Um, I'm not sure whether it's going to have Happy Halloween or, or whatever yet, but that's going to kind of be here. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be like this. Plus there's going to be loads of smaller flowers. You've got to finish all this. There's still so much to add to this. And then where I've kind of die cut my um, sugar skulls, some of these are going to be on the tops of the rosettes, like so. Um, maybe even on the flower there. You see, I want to do more though. I want to build that up. But I'm going to have them kind of like so as well and I think that's going to look really really fun and start to bring it together plus I've got to do the ribbon to hang it on and the backing but you can kind of see there how it's all going to pull together so I'm going to take a photo of this and take them off first because they probably won't all stay as they are but I'm just going to take a picture of this okay so I've got my photo so now I can take this all apart again so I've actually used all of the rosettes apart from these here but that's not to say I still won't add them in so I think I yeah I've done the right amount so that's definitely what you need to make this nice big feature okay so I've got my hot glue on and now I'm going to start building it up so where I've put this kind of backing that's where I'm going to add my glue. So I'm just going to splodge some hot glue on one bit there. I'm also going to be reinforcing the back. So we'll do that at the very, very end before we put the ribbon on. So I'm going to have this one about there and just stick that down. Okay, so that's that one stuck in place. And then when I flip it over, what I'll be doing is adding strips of um, probably chipboard 
connecting these pieces as well just so it all stays obviously nice and secure okay then I've got a green one further down here so again I'm going to pop my hot glue like so and that one's going to come just down there okay and then I've got another small one which is coming up here so I'm just going to go around now and just recreate that photo okay so everything is stuck down you can see now I lift it up it looks really really good and I haven't even finished it yet but I'm loving it already now it is strong it's lightweight but it is strong but what I want to do because some of these are a little bit kind of dangly like that one there you can see just down here it's kind of a bit loose so I'm just going to flip the whole thing over and I've just gone to my scrap chipboard um, drawer and basically I'm just going to kind of start from the middle and then stick them onto the backs of these kind of points. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Okay, so I've just got seven strips. I'm just going to kind of cut them as and when, you know, depending on what length I need them. Uh, it doesn't obviously look great, but nobody's going to see the back anyway. But it's just to, to really reinforce um, and make it last because I want to be able to bring this out, you know, each year. So that one is going to have to, I'm going to have to cut a couple of these pom-poms off as well. So this is optional, depending on how much you've put on it, depending on how big yours is. Um, in the past, I have done ones where I just have a big circle or a big square piece of chipboard and stick everything to that. But because of the shape that I wanted, this one obviously it is a little bit different. So I'm just going to pop some of my hot glue on the edge there. And then splodge some under this just get that stuck down and that will just really kind of strengthen the back and make sure none of this is going to fall off okay so that's the back all reinforced now so this is really really strong it's not going to fall apart it doesn't look the best I might put some washi tape over there if I want to but and do another circle maybe put washi tape on all of them and then a circle to just cover that just so it does visually um, I guess look nicer but anyway the front is just I love it it's coming together so nicely so next I want to get my kind of handle what I'm going to hang it um, from in place and then I can kind of start to work around that because I don't want to do it all and then hang it up and it not look right so I did just put it up on my door just to check that I'm happy with with the kind of um, the size and everything and it is it's really really full so it's going to hang from here so this is going to go up to the kind of the top left and this is going to come down to the bottom right so if I flip this over keeping it in the same orientation there like so okay so it's going to be like that so the the strap is going to come up through the middle like so so I'm just going to stick the two pieces onto here um, this is just the easiest way to do it plus I can then take this off if it's wrong so it's easy to kind of you know um, stick it down and then check hang it if you're not happy you can always come and peel it off again so I'm just gonna stick those two down actually now I've done that I think I will put another large that's not big enough but if you imagine put a big circle over that um, just to make it all nice so keep them nice and straight obviously it's, it's entirely up to you what length you want it so th this is about 44 inches okay so I have stuck down my sugar skulls here um, the uh, hook or the ribbon is already on there to hang it so now I'm just playing around with the happy Halloween which I'm going to go for now I have been collecting for years um, Scrabble pieces um, any games where there are like letters I collect them all um, and this I've, just, I've had numerous jars um, and yeah I just collect them you find them in charity shops sometimes people are selling incomplete games for like pennies or even giving them away for free car boot sales and so on anyway I've gone through and I've had a play around I've got some of these wooden ones here but they just didn't look that Kind of, they didn't pop whereas these ones here um, although I'm missing a H I thought I had everything I've just realized now I've got no H I must have forgot to get that out so I will grab that one oh no there it is I knew I had it there we go 
there's my H. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is this is just that one inch thick chipboard that I used to reinforce the back. I am going to take these off and then I've just got a thick washi tape. I'm going to cover this chipboard I mean, you're hardly going to see any of it anyway. And I need to trim it down a bit, but I just thought this washi tape in terms of colours, had the similar kind of colours. So for any bits that were poking through. Okay, so I've just covered that piece and then I'm going to start hot gluing these letters right at the edge there. I don't think I want any, it might have a little bit on show actually because I can put some, I can attach some flowers to either end actually. So yeah, I will leave a gap. But I'm going to go along now and I'm going to stick, leaving a little gap just so you can see a little bit of that colour coming through. And I'm going to go and stick these ones all down along here. Okay, so they are both stuck now on these strips, so I've got it nice and straight, so I know that that's where they need to be. So I'm going to have my happy there, and I'm going to build up all flowers still around it, so there's still lots more to do. And then the Halloween is going to be, again, make sure it's straight, like so. So I'm just going to get that stuck down, and I can use the... I've got blue, blue glue guns, blue glue stick now because I'm running out of my white ones. So I think there. And then this one is going to sit on this one and this one. Okay, we've got a little bit of wiggle room there before it sets. I think that's fine. Okay, I just hung it up and that is perfect. It's nice and straight and I'm really pleased with that. So now I'm going to go and die cut loads of flowers. I'm going to get embellishments, glitter, all sorts and start to really kind of add some more kind of fun bits to it and some sparkle and get some more of these. Um, I think, yeah, I'll try and nestle a few more of these sugar skulls as well. Okay, so I'm just putting together some flowers. So I've just die cut loads of pieces. Now I had a lady comment um, asking how I made my flowers on, um, it was on the loaded shaker easel card and I had those three flowers along the bottom and that was these ones here. Um, and she just asked how I done the flowers. Now I will share um, a little playlist up here of all of the other tutorials where I make flowers. But basically, when you die cut, they're just flat pretty boring you can layer them up but they don't look very good if you've got any kind of stylus which has got these large thicker balls on the end these are um, you can buy these for using when you're making your sugar flowers for your um, cakes cake making um, you can get really thick ones as well but these are by um, paperbox.co.uk and basically with this um, I've got this piercing mat here um, you want something that's got a soft surface, so any kind of little um, foam mat, and just go along and just kind of break down the fibres, but roll this kind of barbarian end over, and it will bring them to life. And that looks so much better than what it was when it was flat. And then the one that would go on top would be this one here. So again, I'll just go over that, and kind of rolls about off the off the uh, mat because obviously it's just the way it goes but that's the next one there which in this color is this one so now if I sit that inside and pop a little bit of glue you can see how now that flower is going to start to come together and then you just put a little um, you know gemstone rhinestone or whatever in the middle but I'm basically just going along you see I've already done all of these and I've got all of those ones to do and then I'm going to start putting them together so I'm going to carry on rolling them all for the minute and then um, I'll come back again when we start to put them together okay so that's what they look like when you stick them down and layer them all up they really come to life now you can also distress them as well um, I'm not going to this time just because there is nothing distressed in this project at all so I'm just going to keep them as they are so just you know start with the largest of whatever it is that you've die cut and then just stick the next size down on top just overlapping it okay so you start to fill all the gaps and then get the next size down and again overlap that one each time you're popping it in between the gaps of each of the petals from the previous flower if that makes sense so then you start to see them um, all there you can really see it you know where they've all staggered and then again the next size and just keep doing that until you've used all of your 
pieces up. Okay, and then that's the last one. I'm just using the end of this stylus here from that flower, We Are Memory Keepers flower punch. And um, just make sure it's all stuck down. And then you can really kind of lift up all the sides. And you can curl them again if you want. You can just kind of go around on the edges there. And just play around with them really. You know, that you can really manipulate the, the paper. And like I said, just really kind of bring them to life. And then if you grab um, the pokey tool, you can get in and lift all these bits up in the middle. And then I'm going to pop a little rhinestone in the centre of all of them. Once I've stuck them down, I'm going to stick them down first and then I can decide what colour rhinestones I want to use. Because this is just using the scraps up. But look at that, from the flat die cuts that it was, it's now this really nice 3D flower. So I think that's enough. I don't think I need any more because I've still got other bits and pieces that I'm going to add. Okay, so everything is really stuck nicely now. And I'm going to start playing around and adding in these flowers. I'm going to add them on the tops of some of these rosettes. I might even add some little leaves in as well. I have some real leaves. Um, well, not real, they're artificial, but they're made to look real. Um, I think they could look quite good as well. And I'm going to pop, I think that one will look good on the end there. So I'm just going to start, I'll speed this video up, but I will keep it so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to start playing around with these flowers. Okay, so that is everything done. You can see I've added embellishments all inside every one of the flowers. And I've also, on the skulls, I've put some um, little gems, faceted gems, rhinestones there as well. You can see them on the bottoms here. They look really good when they catch the light. And yeah, I absolutely love this. It's gonna look so good hanging on my door and yeah. Hope you've enjoyed it. So it's a bit of a meaty project. Obviously you don't have to go as big as me. You could just keep everything within that first fan that I done, but I love it. I'm gonna tidy up the back, like I said, with that big disc and just put some of the, um, that washi tape. I'll just put that over the backs of those um, pieces. I might, may add a few little charms or something to it, but otherwise I think, I think I'm done. I might put a bit of Wink Stella on it as well. Actually, I've got a few bits here. I might brush some of the, the leaves, but you'll see that in the photos. But yeah, there we have it. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.